This is Twit. Uh, Android has an operating system update problem. Um, yes, it does. Period. There's there's just no other way to describe it, especially if you're if you're thinking in terms of not even in terms of upgrades for uh, capability, but but security. And uh, a lot of older phones, especially less expensive Android phones, never received updates. So one of the biggest things that started to happen with uh, Android 8.0, a.k.a. Oreo, was trying to figure out ways to speed up phone manufacturers, uh, you know, delivering operating system upgrade, which brings you to the Android uh, Project Treble which always sounds odd to me because I think of treble as being the ephemeral sort of end of the musical spectrum. But um, this was literally re-architecting the Android operating system framework and just making it faster and easier and simpler and therefore less expensive for a manufacturer to update an existing device to a new version of Android. Um, Treble's only for devices launching with Android 8 and beyond. Um, so, you know, it's not something that would scale backwards to existing phones, which is unfortunate since that's the phones with the vast majority of the problems out there. But uh, um, it's, you know, it's interesting in the sense that it takes the operating system uh, and it sort of, well, I guess decouples would be the right word for it. Uh, all of the, the the proprietary pieces you need to support a system on a chip. So, you know, all of the drivers and, and other things like that. And the SOC support ends up being on a separate software layer. So Qualcomm can implement that immediately, hand that to a handset maker, and then the handset maker can tweak what they need to tweak uh, for each specific model of phone. Um, Qualcomm, I'm going to quote uh, Ken here, Qualcomm announced earlier this week they have been working with Google ahead of the Android P developer preview release to pre-integrate support for the next version of the operating system with Qualcomm Snapdragon-powered devices, specifically devices with Snapdragon 845, 660, and 636. And that means more devices than you would have expected in previous versions of Android are already uh, compatible with the Android P developer preview. So that's that's a sign that this is working. Uh, it's not a you know mind altering number, um, but uh, Android P developer preview uh, can be rolled out, of course, on the Pixel, the Pixel XL, the Pixel Two, the Pixel Two XL, but the Essential Phone, the Nokia Seven Plus, the Oppo R15 Pro, the Sony Xperia XZ2, which is a good looking phone if you like black, uh, you know, black boxes, uh, the Vivo X21 and X21 UD, and the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2S. And that's a mixture of 660s, uh, 835, and 845 Snapdragon processors. So This will hit two of my phones. So I've got both the Essential and a OnePlus, and this it, I've actually loaded onto the Essential already. It works fantastically. <laughs> this is even more important, though, because there was a story that Wired published not too long ago uh, with security research labs. They tested 1,200 phones, and they found out that some of these manufacturers are claiming patches that they never mm -hmm. actually implemented. Uh, the, oh, wor yeah. the worst offenders were ZTE and, and TCL. Uh, they, they got some handsets they sell overseas where they just out and out lied. They, they put patches <laughs> and updated yeah. when the patches didn't actually exist. Or even worse was uh, you had companies like uh, Xiaomi and HTC mm -hmm. that instead of patching features, they just removed features saying, well, okay, that, that handles the patch. Of course, that does like it. being patched. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like being a patch, except there's still a hole in the operating system that can be hooked into. So, you know, it, it, and, and we all know this. Uh, th this is the thing about Android, and people are starting to recognize you want to buy from a reputable handset maker yeah. because those patches are no longer a convenience. It's, I mean, it's the difference between having a device you can trust and a device you can't. Trust. Trust. Trusting your device. Security on mobile devices. It's so... Ephemeral. Landline. <laughs> also, yeah, well, Patrick, notice, you know what manufacturer wasn't in that list of phones that could get the beta? Samsung. Oh, man. And that's kind of yeah, huge. It's... That's kind of a head scratcher. It's like, wait a minute. So is this is Well, this LG's the not on there either. Uh, yeah, exactly. So you've got major manufacturers, the, the bulk of Android phones that are sold today, I mean, I, they're not included in this. Yeah, that's a... That's, uh... That's a good observation. I, I, you know, I'm curious to see. I, it, it may simply be that those manufacturers don't want to deal with large portions of their consumer uh, base 
dumping the developer version of the operating system on their phones, or maybe they have an internal version of the developer preview program that they run. But um, I don't know. I it, it, I would like. You know, it, the other thing is is that I was thinking about it is while this will help with manufacturer adoption, you still have to go from the manufacturer to the <laughs> carrier yeah. for the vast majority of these upgrades, um, which is a a problem a that cannot be solved. That yeah, it's it is a pain.